Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to the press conference of round five, just before the free day. And I have very special guests starting from my right, uh, Zhu Chen, from, uh, originally from China, but now playing for Qatar, and her husband, Grandmaster uh, Mohammed, also from Qatar. And on my right, I, we have uh, Grandmaster Maxim uh, Vachelagraf from France, and the uh, icon of chess <laughs> journalist, uh, Leoncho Garcia from Spain. Welcome, all of you. Let me first uh, start with uh, uh, Chen. Uh, it's very special that uh, very few couples can say that we play on the same team for our uh, national team at the Chess Olympiad. In fact, as far as I know, you are the only couple here in terms of playing together. How does it feel? Well, <laughs> I thought it's normal. I didn't know it's so special. <laughs> Well, let's backtrack a little bit. Uh, obviously, it's not the first time that the two of you play on the same team. How did you meet? Either of you. Okay, it's a long story. 20 years make ago. it short. Okay, 20 years ago. So it was Asian Championship Under 20 in Malaysia. And from there we started. Was it love at first sight? Okay, you can say so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have any kids by now? Yeah, we have two daughters. Donna daughters? And How old are they? Uh, they will be 10 and uh, 6. So are we seeing any new future world champions in them? In chess? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. In something <laughs> they're, else they're maybe? Playing, they're playing tennis. So, tennis, okay. Yeah. So maybe Grand Slam champions so it's a very, very good choice for them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll get back to both of you, but let me move to this side for a moment. Uh, Maxime, you have made tremendous leap over the past few years. You've been uh, one of the the best junior players, of course, in the world. I first kind of seriously noticed you when you broke 2,700. You were around 18 years old, I think. And uh, but then I've been following your progress. But now you're you're really up, very high on the rating list. What was the success to reach from really high to the top 10, 15 players in the world? Well, uh, it's clear that uh, starting from the moment I was 18 and uh, breaking already to the 2700 group I thought I could do well but then for a few years I stagnated a bit sometimes uh, had a lot of ups and downs so uh, I changed something at some point because I was tired of it I mean maybe worked a bit harder I mean chose the right persons and uh, then uh, at some point it started to to bring results simply and is it a secret what you changed well not completely but um, <laughs> not even clear it's a secret but uh, anyway um, I mean uh, I worked harder that's most there is and uh, well at some point, you start getting results, you get your confidence back, and once you have confidence with you, it's always easier, I guess. That's excellent. Let me go to Leoncho for a moment. Uh, I first met you probably in 1988, I think, at mm -hmm. the Chess Olympiad. And usually, the case is that you are interviewing me, and I told <laughs> you now it's uh, revenge time, and it's my turn. <coughs> Uh, you must have hundreds, if not thousands, of stories. You have interviewed probably everybody who counts in chess. What would be your favorite story or the most interesting story to share? Well, uh, I think that my most unforgettable memories related to Olympiads is it's, it, will, it will sound very familiar to you. It's Thessaloniki 88. Uh, the very first day I was at the press center just reading the list of participants and then I see Hungary, Polgar, Polgar, Polgar and Madel. And then I thought, well, looks like I have a very nice story here. But in reality, the story was even much more interesting than I thought because I discovered that 
we were talking not only about a chess phenomenon from the sportive point of view, but also about something which was extremely interesting from the educational point of view. I mean, how your parents educate yourself, Judith and Sophia. So this is actually one of my most successful stories in my professional life. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let me go back again uh, to my right. And uh, both of you are grandmasters, which is again a rarity uh, that the husband and wife are both grandmasters. Do you play sometimes at home chess? Well, um, at home very real, but uh, sometimes we're training together in federation. You are? So whenever you play, who's winning? Me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was confident. <laughs> uh, you played both many, many Olympiads. Uh, Mohamed said he played 13, and yeah. if he counted correctly, it's probably your ninth Olympiad, Chen. Uh, which is your favorite memory from all the Olympiads for both of you? Well, okay, for me, it it was nice the first time I played the uh, Olympiad in 1994 and because it was uh, okay first time when you attend the Olympiad is something special. Mohammed? Yeah. What, what's your favorite part about Olympiad? There are so many players here. Yeah, it's, I mean I like, like the gathering here with all these players in all these countries. I think it's very special to be here. Uh, Maxim, I, I know that uh, you also went to university. You didn't skip that part as some uh, high-level chess players do. What did you study? Yeah, I studied mathematics for, I mean, I got a bachelor degree, simply. Uh, I mean, it's simple. I thought I could do both at the, at the same time, and I decided to, to have some background in mathematics. And, uh, well, once I started to believe that I couldn't uh, do both, I just went to chess and, um, and stopped stud studying. Do you believe it was the right decision to go to university? It uh, made you a more complete person and uh, improve overall eventually your chess career as well? Or do you regret that you spent four years, kind of, or three years, uh, uh, Slowing, uh, not spending as much time on chess as you otherwise could have. Well, it's hard to say, but um, I'm, I'm not sure it made a big difference. Uh, I mean, I was still working on chess, and uh, I was having good results also. And then at some point when I stopped studying, actually, I had a bit of a fall in the waiting list, simply because maybe I didn't really know what to do with my time. So. I don't think it made a big difference. I, I'm not the hard-working uh, kind of person. So uh, from that point of view, I mean, going to study probably just helped me keep some stable life, uh, social life, uh, and so on. Laoncho, you attended all these Olympiads all the way from 88 until now. Did you skip any? Yes, Torino. I couldn't go by because of personal reasons. Yes, only the only one. I see. Which was your favorite? If you have to pick one, or top three? Oh, that's very difficult indeed. Well, Dubai '86 probably because of the big budget was the the best uh, organized. Calbia '2004 because it was in Spain, and this one because it's the last one, <laughs> <laughs> which is always the the more fresh in my memory. Yeah. What's the biggest change you see in all these years that you attended Olympiads? I see some changes, uh, positive changes in the attitude of players. Now, most of them are more cooperative with uh, journalists. I think um, one of the positive sides of this Olympiad is this uh, theoretical novelty of the mix zone. Uh, this is similar to what is going on in every other professional sport, and it's a very good idea. I think that professional uh, chess players, grandmasters, should realize that among their uh, obligations, they should include uh, to be cooperative with the press. It's not always the case, but this is improving, and this Olympiad uh, is a, a step forward on that direction.
Yeah, I believe it's the first time that any Olympiad has that, or maybe even any chess event, as far as I know. That's right. The yeah. mix zone. And I think it's uh, very fair that all the sponsors who are listed mm -hmm. behind mm -hmm. us get some uh, more visibility uh, for, the, for their sponsorship, I mm -hmm. guess. That's right. Okay, we have something uh, very exciting to talk about. Uh, both of you are not just chess players, but I know that especially Mohammed is very much involved as the chief organizer of the upcoming Qatar Open, which uh, among uh, strong players everybody is talking about now. It has a huge prize fund. Maybe you want to tell a few words just first about uh, what is the event about and when is it? Yeah, it will uh, be in November, December. We are having uh, around 100 grandmasters to now. 100 uh, grandmasters? Yes. Uh, we're also pleased that Maxim is taking part in our tournament and also uh, Kramnik. And uh, we are trying to do something uh, different. We are trying to, I mean, to organize very strong open uh, with good uh, prizes. What's the f price fund of the event? Uh, it's $110,000. That's fantastic. Uh, yes, but uh, also we're trying to increase it in the next coming years. So do you believe it's the first of many in a series? Yes, we are planning to change that's, some... That's excellent to hear. And you told me something very uh, exciting and a great news, I think, for 10 players. Yeah, Would you like are, to tell what are, it is? Uh, since we are now in the Olympiad, I think it's a good uh, chance to give also some players the chance to bring Qatar Open. So we're giving like uh, 10 wild cards, five men and five uh, women. You will do the, <laughs> the Okay, <laughs> so basically the big announcement is that Mohammed just told me uh, right before we started the press conference that on behalf of the Qatar Open, uh, he is uh, giving out 10 wild cards, including airfare and accommodation in yes. double room. Yes. Uh, uh, during the Qatar Open to 10 randomly uh, selected players. So we will have a box where uh, every player rated above 2300 can put their name and then we'll see how many hundreds we'll, names we'll have and randomly, publicly, it will be selected five men and five women. So this is a great opportunity for, for all of you who would love to go but it's too expensive to go. It's a special lottery or drawing of lots that you can win a trip to Qatar and compete with the ones like Maxim or Vlad Kramnik, you said, is playing yes. as well. So this is a great opportunity. I see a hand already up. Well, Just an important question. In Qatar, is gambling allowed? Gambling? Gambling? Yeah, is it allowed in Qatar? No, it's not allowed. Okay, interesting. <laughs> it's allowed to chess play. It's a joke, obviously. <laughs> So this is a big announcement. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll have uh, further announcements probably on the official site on, on where exactly the box will be. Yeah. Uh, and uh, look out for it uh, round six through 10. So five days in a row, not the last day, but round six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Each day uh, there will be announced one winner after we draw the name yeah. of one male and one female player rated 2300 plus on the August 1st list. Yes. Well, this is very, very generous, I would say, from the organization, and I'm sure many players will be extremely happy to hear that. Uh, let me just have one final round of questions to everybody. Uh, who do you think is the favorite to win, uh, Leoncho, the man open section and the women's section? The favorite? To win. Uh -huh. Who would be your bet? Mm, well, I said at the beginning, of course, Russia is theoretically favorite, but mm, be careful with China. And I keep uh, saying... For the open section? Yes. I keep saying this. And uh, for the women's section, of course, China. Okay. Maxim? Well, here we are, friends. Why not? <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. No, um, seriously, well, we bet Armenia. Okay, we lost to Azerbaijan, unfortunately, but it's still the beginning, so I, I wouldn't count us out, for sure, but the real favorites, I don't know, but maybe, maybe still Russia is, is the favorite, but I hope we will have our chances. Excellent. What do you think? I think Russia, France, and China, yeah. 
Russia and France and China. France and China. Yes. Wow. Okay. Well, I personally wish China will win the open section because of the men's team they won a few times second place already. So I just wish they will have good luck. And for the women's team, I think China and Russia, they are both quite strong. Actually, I wanted to ask you, Chen, uh, you grew up in China and now live many years in Qatar. How do you see the difference between uh, the two countries when it comes to chess culture and chess preparation and support to chess? Well, in China we have uh, a lot of players and uh, it's a very... Well, you, you need to work very hard to keep your position and... Uh, but there's many competing. It's not so easy to stay in one level. You can see in my age, the, uh, the same players, they already retired. But uh, in Qatar, okay, I can play much uh, longer time and I'm having very good coach. And uh, so this I have to thanks to Qatar Chess Federation. Um, so you see it's different. <laughs> How is the support to chess in Qatar in general? Is there, for example, a chess in the schools or, or is it only on the more the top players who get the support? In fact, in Qatar we have this lack of uh, chess culture and uh, we are trying very hard to promote chess in Qatar. But it's not so easy. We are, uh, population is not too much. And I hope this Qatar Masters will help us to change the division of uh, ch chess in Qatar. So in, in very few schools or in no schools there is chess? Yeah, there so is very few. Very few. Uh, it's limited and we cannot get uh, some talented players, you know. We, we need time, I don't know, maybe five years and then we can maybe I, get I some players. I think in general because uh, in Qatar you have 200,000, 300,000 uh, 200, 300, corporations. It's a very hmm. small yeah. amount. And in, in, for example, in China it's... Uh, the opposite. <laughs> so it, it's much more chance right. to have players. Excellent. Well, I uh, wish you best of luck for the rest of the tournament and uh, for France as well. Laoncho, any special stories so far at this Olympiad? Well, uh, I have attended today the Chesney School Commission and uh, it was very nice to see how FIDE is finally understanding that uh, chess in schools is really extremely important because um, several officials were saying for years how important it is, but the, the reality was not proportional to, the, to their words. And today I have seen a very positive change because I'm sure the future of chess goes through uh, introducing chess massively in schools. So I'm happy to see this in FIDE. I absolutely agree with that. I wish uh, all the three players uh, best of luck for the rest yeah. of the round. Uh, Leoncho, I wish you good reporting uh, you of the yeah. event. I know you do that in various uh, sources. And if anybody has any questions, uh, we have the microphone ready. If not, then uh, thank you very much. Thank you. And until the next conference in two days, tomorrow is a day off.